our first key finding was that viewers think of and use smart TV as an enhanced TV, basically. It's, it's really an all-in-one hub, but you've got TV at the center of it. So we're really kind of going back to the living room where viewers want to bring all of the functionality of smart TVs together into one central place. Um, according to the Quant, 56% agree that smart TV is the go-to hub to access a variety of content. Um, but it's important, as you can see from potential owner Joe's quote, that the screen is large enough to be enjoyed without strain. I mean, I think, and I've even certainly experienced this during our, our apartment construction, Watching on an iPad is just really not a great experience when you have to do a lot of it. You, you want your television back. You want to be able to sit back and relax with other people. And um, that's certainly something that, that we're seeing in terms of, um, of other people's responses here. <clears throat> um, and it's still TV, um, but it's better. Um, and as we see from Zach, um, who's a potential owner, it's a TV, but it's providing you with the features of the TV and just allows you to do more. So it's not, you know, I, I think the fact that it's just a better TV is, is not lost on, on anyone. Um, the other functionality is great to have in addition to the central TV function, but um, basically it's still a TV. Um, and when we asked people um, what smart TV functions they used, um, basically, once again, we saw the interactions with television shows were still the focal point. So this is just a little bit more detail on the same point. You do see the top line is that watching video via subscription streaming service is definitely the highest number here. Um, not necessarily in terms of the frequency of use, um, but in terms of the overall percentage, saying that that is the function that is important. And, you know, I think Definitely Netflix and Amazon are kind of a match made in heaven with, heaven with a smart TV in terms of the kind of um, offering that they have and program selection and menus. And um, I'm certainly hopeful that as we catch up on the television side that that, um, that can change. But on, in terms of TV functionality, um, Directly following that, we have you know <coughs> watching um, TV live, um, watching on DVR, watching on demand, um, and watching via on-demand services. So there's a whole grouping of, of um, functionality that definitely centers on the more traditional television experience. Um, and then creeping in there in terms of the non-TV areas, we have um, browsing the web or watching videos on the web. Uh, informational content and use of another device or control to interact with the smart TV. So uh, most of it's TV um, and that's a good thing and we think it's a good opportunity for television content providers um, to build on. Okay, so streaming migrates to the big stream. Um, moving on to the next finding. This is, this is the living room family watching Animal Planet Treehouse Masters. Sorry, I had to do a little bit of promotion for Discovery. Um, with their popcorn on their couch. It's kind of, it's a little bit, you know, going back in time. Um, but with the help of a smart TV, group viewing could become a much more satisfying experience again. Um, and as streaming migrates to the big screen, um, smart TV makes mobile devices mobile again. So, um, you know, most people are talking about when they're at home, they do prefer the larger screen. I mean, I think just about everything we have seen over time um, has proven that out. And once again, we're seeing the same thing from this research. So here we say the top benefits of smart TVs are seen as allowing streaming video on a big screen and not having to watch on a tablet or smartphone. And Terry, who's an owner, says she hasn't watched Netflix on her iPad lately. It's mostly done while she's traveling and notice it's certainly not at home. So that tablet viewing experience is a good, uh, it's, it's a good fallback if you don't have the big screen, but it does not seem to be what people really want. Um, and particularly when they're watching Netflix on a small screen, um, they really would rather have it 
on the large living room screen. Okay, um, so just again on that point, um, as you can see from the blue circles, smart TV um, is dominant in home viewing, and about 90% of viewers prefer the smart TV for watching live TV. It's got better sound and picture quality, uh, and they like to watch it with other people, so it really um, is preferred by a, a broad margin um, in those areas. You do see in terms of watching a show late at night or watching alone that you start to see more um, preference coming from tablets, smartphones, and um, computers, but the, the uh, smart TV number is still up at around 75%. This one is an interesting, um, an interesting stat. I mean, what we're saying here is that basically a third of people would prefer to do all of their interacting on that big screen. That they don't really want to have a separate, um, either you know, in their lap, uh, iPad or a smartphone um, to be voting or uh, in in other way act interacting with the um, with what's going on on the main screen. But there's still 46% who want that you know, second screen to be doing whatever they're doing on. So I think it is probably largely going to be situational. And um, some things are going to be easier to do on that big screen. And then there are other things that probably not going to want to do on the big screen because they're a little bit more private in terms of what you're doing while you're watching. You may not want to be sharing them with everybody in the room. Or um, um, maybe it's just more convenient to have something in your lap. But um, there's a split on that, but I think there's definitely uh, the potential for people to be doing more uh, interacting with programming on that big screen.